I think it's quite interesting that it's the beginning of the month and that's the month of November, which is also disability month. I didn't even know that this was disability awareness month and I've been disabled for four years. So when I learned that, you know, I realized there's not enough awareness out there. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> if even the people with disabilities don't know that it's disability awareness month, that's quite funny. Exactly. Uh, I always tell people that before I got injured, I knew no one with a disability. My mm -hmm. frame of reference was able-bodied and able-bodied only. And that isn't correct. I mean, I had to learn everything from scratch. And I didn't know how to interact with other disabled people until I became disabled myself. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed the distinct lack of ability for people to interact with disabled people. Mm -hmm. Like, I think you might have experienced it yourself is people just don't know how to interact with you. They always worry they offend you with something. That's not really a way to build an inclusive society. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, I have quite an interesting daily environment because I mean, I teach, so I deal with young children. For example, today I was on break duty and a grade three with no scum came up to me and just stared at my hand. And then uh, she said, what's wrong with your hand? Now, an adult would never do that. Um, and, and, and I said, no, you know, I was involved in a car accident. And so my, my hand was injured because I didn't want to go into the whole, you know, brain damage because uh, I don't think she would get that. So I just said, you know, I was injured in a car accident when I was very small. And, and that's why, again, an adult or someone that's a little bit older would have, you know, given that off and said, yeah, I'm done. But we ended up having a conversation about it because she had more questions. And I think that was cool because while we, we walked and talked about it and, and uh, she asked me some questions and I spoke to her and I mean, highlighting disability awareness. Now she's more aware. You know, she's been able to discuss it with me. It's, uh, it's something that she hadn't come into contact with before. And now she's come into contact with someone with it and has, a, has been able to um, chat to them and find out more. You know, it's not a, a taboo thing, which is sometimes the case with people, uh, with adults in, in, in public um, with their children. If an adult is taking a child and the child wants to ask a question, the adult normally goes, no, don't ask them uh, or anything. Well, they come and they say like, sorry for asking. And, and, you know, I always say to everybody, I'm an open book, ask me whatever you want. I really don't care. I'd rather have you know, and also know the truth then you know surmise or think that you know the right answers yeah absolutely i've had the exact same experiences kids are inquisitive by nature and they want to know more they they don't have that filter on yet where we go i probably shouldn't ask that yeah so i had a similar situation where i was waiting for a lift one day like an elevator and i had a family with two boys next to me and the little boy turns to me and goes why are you in a wheelchair Mm. the mother goes blood red the father doesn't know what to do so i turn to the kid and i go i hurt my back so now i can't walk he goes oh okay suddenly the parents are now in a relaxed state they're mm. asking me all sorts of questions asking about what happened and all that kind of stuff they wanted to know but they had that block they couldn't mm. ask me they thought it's wrong i shouldn't and it just took the kid without scorn like you say to ask the question and me without any anger or animosity, just answering the question in a way that the kid can understand, you know, this is how we raise a gener the next generation to be more inclusive is teach the kids. Yeah. I mean, at the beginning of every year, when I have um, a new class that I haven't taught before, I may have come across them in the hallways or whatever. So they may have asked me one or two questions, but the first lesson I always take at least half an hour to an hour, depending on how many questions they have. And I tell them, you know, I was injured in a car accident. And obviously, like we've just been saying, I alter it to, to their age in, in terms of how much depth I go into, but I tell them. And then at the end, I say, you know, do you have any questions? Ask. Because then they're more aware. And then they go home and they'll tell their parents, you know, just like with your experience, once the kid has broken the ice, the parents are more willing to engage and go, oh, that's interesting. Um, I've also had an experience where a child who is battling in class, not because they have a disability, just they're battling socially. Uh, their parents came to me and said, you know, thank you so much for teaching my child. 
thank you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's doing well in maths. And they were like, no, that's not what it's about. Um, you know, you having a disability and standing up and teaching as if, you know, nothing's wrong has given my child strength, uh, you know, and, and shown them that anything's possible. And that's, again, exactly what I aim to do. And that's probably one of the reasons why you got into the motivational speaking to begin with. And I've noticed it for myself is people manage to get something out of it from hearing my story or seeing me, you know, continue with life as normal, as normal mm. as I can be. It does help people. I know a lot of people are anti what we call the inspiration porn. Yeah. That is a different topic entirely. But I have noticed that it helps people just, you know, get perspective on their own lives as well. Mm. And if I can help people, you know, great. That's why I want to do this. And I think the same for you. We've had these discussions. We just want yeah. to help people. For me, it's like I, I call teaching my, my calling and my profession. And I feel as though I've been teaching my whole life because whether you like it or not, as a person with a disability, you stand out and you're different. Uh, and, and you can either run away from that and hide and, 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 and play the victim or fight the system or whatever you want to call it. And, and for people that do that, that's absolutely fine. Because I mean, everybody's you know, different and, and they have their own approaches and their own stories and everything. Um, but for me, I see that moment and say, that's an opportunity where I can teach someone something, you know, break down a barrier. Uh, and this is not always just disability. You know, it's, uh, it's for me, as I said, I'm a teacher by profession and passion. So if I can help them with anything, uh, I end up doing it, you know, but I think where it started was having a disability and being different and being able to say, hold on, this is something that they need to know about because they've never come into contact with it before. So, you know, can, can I help break that barrier and can I help them feel a little bit more at ease?